Well, how you doing guys? Well, I'm not doing here. It's Maryland. It's like the last day of that polar vortex thing. Hopefully. It's cold. And, uh, well, I figured I'd take you out with me. I gotta go to run some errands. Do another day out with Fallen onto an E sort of thing. So, yeah. Snow in here in Baltimore. And, uh, not bad. Compared to, like, Minnesota, this is easy street so let's go out have a day all right everybody we are at uh, or at least i am <laughs> this is like i'm at disney world or something now i'm at uh titan hobbies and games i doubt i'll film what's inside it's just uh uh, basically where I get my miniature paint and stuff like that. Uh, if I get, I don't know, maybe I can get some footage, uh, with my cell phone or whatever. I just don't want to be that guy that, you know, goes around and records people, especially people who kind of like me, nerdy people don't necessarily want to be, uh, recorded all the time. So, uh, we'll see what's in there. See if we can get some good stuff. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, no real need to actually record in there because I wasn't in there a whole long time. Um, I was... You know, I'm always looking for different miniatures to paint and whatnot, and uh, they have individual miniatures, but they didn't have the, because uh, I'm starting a D&D campaign soon, they didn't have the uh, the booster boxes that I like, just because I like the pre-painted D&D miniatures, it doesn't bother me. But uh, I did get a couple colors that I needed, uh, ivory, Vallejo, ivory, um, it's always good to have an off-white for like bone and stuff like that, and eyeballs, because no eyeballs are pure white. Uh, silver, I needed silver. I had gold, but I needed silver. And some, uh, this is burnt red for when I make fire for my D&D miniature and paint them. So that's uh, pretty much it. I'm gonna head to one more place. Uh, what is it, Savers? It's like a uh, thrift store. I might record in there because we'll see what else we can find. And then on the way home, um, I'll uh, try to give you a, the best explanation I can for where I've been and what I've been doing, because I explained it in the uh, Subnautica video, or videos a bunch, but, um, well, for anybody that really wants to know, I'll try to do the whole thing, so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, go on, I'm going over to Save It's all, all the way across the other, uh, section. Okay, so I'm just leaving Savers, as you can see, maybe it's backwards to you, I don't know. Uh, I got some CDs, didn't really see too much anything else. Hopefully when I lose a lot, you know, a bunch of weight, I'll be able to actually fit into some of the clothes there. So I'll, I'll get in the car and show you what CDs I got. Okay, so I'm in the car. Uh, let's see, uh, okay, start off Blues Traveler. This is a joke, but I actually like the Blues Traveler. There's a bunch of really good songs on this uh, uh, album, four, very good. Again, this is a lot of 90s stuff. So we got Melissa Etheridge. I do love Melissa Etheridge, especially that one. Uh, this is Cheryl Crow. Jeez, look, way 90s, right? Um, oh, here we go. Aria Speedwagon, The Hits. Uh, they have a bunch of good classics on here that I really liked. Uh, same thing with this one. This is Elton John Greatest Hits. Um, I like Elton John. And, uh, I, you know, I know a lot of you are probably saying, can't you just download them? And I'm like, yeah. But I'm kind of on this kick of where I want to actually get the CD and get the actual album. I don't know why. Um, same thing with this one, Simon and Garfunkel's Greatest Hits. I like Greatest Hits albums because it's pretty much all the ones that I like. I don't like all albums unless it's like Rush. Um, this was actually, this one was a great album and a very underrated, uh, uh, band, uh, Fastball. Uh, this is, uh, uh All the Pain Money Can Buy. Uh, the, the song you probably know is The Way. That's the one that they're very famous for. Uh, this one's really good too. Uh, love this band, C Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, this is the uh, pretty much like their 20 greatest hits, and they're very, very good band, obviously. Uh, this is the first one I really saw. Alanis Morissette, uh, Jagged Little Pill. I heard that's coming out on like a weird Broadway thing, so that's interesting. Uh, this one's kind of funny though. Uh, 
I love this movie and I don't know why. It's just one of my guilty pleasure movies. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It's the original soundtrack. I saw it and I was like, gotta get it. Um, and finally, Ace of Base, The Sign. Uh, you know, I love this kind of like Euro pop stuff from the 90s. It just reminds me of when I was a kid. And uh, so I really, I really dug it. Savers is pretty much like the thrift store of choice for me just because they have their stuff kind of organized better than most Goodwills do. Um, I mean, there are some big Goodwills that have, you know, pretty decent uh, stuff. So, yeah, so there's that. I think I want to go to the grocery store. I didn't film any in uh, the Savers just because I really don't like filming in stores. I, you know, it was awkward when I did it the first time during my, like, that first one day out thing. I just, I didn't like it. So, I, it's just weird. So, I don't do it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we're gonna go to the grocery store next, and that will be it. So that'll be my day, and uh, pretty much just painting miniatures when I get home. Maybe I'll show some of that. So, either way, it's 17 degrees outside, geez Louise. So, uh, a lot of you know that, um, let me just adjust to make sure we're right, that, uh, Well, I wasn't doing too well mentally when uh, I left the stop doing the final nine to anything. I really, it was time to stop it anyway, but I just needed to stop it. And uh, well, you see, it was just getting too hard for me at the time. And uh, I, you know, I can't really come back and do it now because I, I actually have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I really wasn't liking where I was going. Sorry, I just went over some train tracks. Uh, I really didn't, wasn't liking where I was going in my life. Um, I was gaining weight. Um, I just wasn't happy at my job. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I just, I, it was it for me. I just, I didn't care anymore. And um, I didn't like that. So I, you know, started going to a therapist and I've been going to a therapist for a while and uh we had uh, you know we, you know with her and my doctor we got uh you know he got me on some head meds and stuff like that and uh I was doing okay I thought and then I started breaking out and I uh, started getting these massive headaches apparently the medicine that I was taking called Pristique was giving me headaches and uh, apparently it can do that it can like basically mimic the symptoms of a caffeine crash that's just kind of how the thing works like if you uh take it all in one point and then like you know it all just kind of fizzles out uh, uh, like at the end of the day and i'd get like these massive headaches and uh that's no fun let me tell you it wasn't any good so we switched it to something else i think it was like uh elect uh, i like i don't remember what it was i don't know i because i always took the uh, generic version so it just you know, I, I could never pronounce it anyway. Uh, some, I think it began with an A. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, you know, because the one thing about mental health and mental health medication, there's so many of them. And, uh, you know, if one doesn't work for you, you have to go back. You have to hopefully recognize that it's not working for you. And you have to go back and, you know, just start taking other ones to find one that works. Because, you know, everybody's uh, chemicals in their head is different. And uh, so I was on this one med and I was doing all right, but I was still, but apparently it was still having the prestique in me, the little bit of the prestique that was left in me was helping me with that. And then finally when that went away, uh, I want to say all hell broke loose. Um, I got real depressed, real bad. It just was like, I didn't feel anything, which was, uh, which, you know, you might think is good. It really isn't because uh, being completely void of emotion is uh, not something I like. Um, it's better than feeling bad, I guess, but I was feeling bad and I just couldn't feel anything. I was numb to everything. I, re I just, I had no zero drive to do anything and all that stuff. And that's when I, you know, it just, it wasn't very good. So I, you know, uh, I kind of kept that to myself. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I figured, oh, okay, maybe this is just what it was supposed to do. Maybe this is what this medicine is supposed to do. 
because, you know, like, you know, nobody tells you what you're supposed to feel, you know, and, um, you know, and it was funny because for the longest time I didn't even, uh, you know, uh, believe that I was depressed and, uh, I just thought I, I would just be depressed this way forever. Uh, cause I think that's just what a depressed mind thinks. It's just like, oh, this is the normal. This is just how I'm going to feel forever. And my doctor kind of put it in a good way. He was like, you, you know, like you're starting behind everybody, you know, everybody else starts at zero. You're st you started at like minus 50. So we got to get you back up to the proper starting line to give you even a chance just to, to have a good normal life. And, uh, that's kind of what made, you know, made me realize that, yeah, you know, depression is a disease. It's, um, you know, it's I, I, like, you know, you know, some people say it's like cancer. It's not exactly like cancer. Cancer is obviously very physically bad, but, uh, I went through surgery recently and the pain I experienced there, the physical pain at like right after surgery is nothing compared to the mental pain and anguish that I put myself through on all those years of not, you know, being on meds and getting my head right. So if you feel that there's no option or no anything like that, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to follow the tunnel. You got to trust the process, find what's right for you, the medication and whatnot, and just go for it and do it and get it right. Cause it all starts up here and then it all, it, it, it's a trickle down effect. You get your mind right. You can then get your body right. And, uh, that's kind of what happened. So, uh, but it was, again, I had to follow this tunnel and this tunnel was pretty dark and it got pretty, pretty narrow sometimes. Um, there was a couple times, uh, toward, I guess, I want to say maybe the June or the end of May before, you know, like, I guess it wasn't, uh, last year. So I guess it was, uh, June of 2017. Um, or May of 2017, I started go. I, I dipped real bad with depression because depression is weird like that. You can be fine for, you know, for a while and then all of a sudden poof, just drops. And, uh, that's what happens with me anyway. And, uh, so I started thinking stupid stuff, you know, like, Hey, let me drive into that wall or let me just do this. I like, I, like I was fantasizing about, you know, killing myself and, um, you know, like it was every morning going to work. It was like, hey, if I just did this, it would be all over. I just want to speed ahead, crash into something, and that will be it. And, uh, you know, again, it's really not good to think about, especially when you're, you know, helping people in a hospital situation. And again, it, you know, with a depressed mind, you don't think about how weird that is and how that's not normal to think. You know, some people joke about, oh, I hate my job. I wish I could kill myself to get it done. That's a, not a joke because I actually potentially thought about it and wanted to do it. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I, I remember one day going into work. And while I was working, again, it, I, I, dry, I dipped hard. And uh, I went into the, um, I was having a panic attack, really severe anxiety attacks. And uh, I... Um, I went to the bathroom and was like, you know, maybe I should just kill myself right in here. And I pulled out my uh, pocket knife and, uh, you know, put it to my wrist. And I was like, the, the only thing that the one, the only thing that stopped me was the thought of, I really don't want to have like a kid come and see me or, uh, or, or, uh, you know, have to find me like that. Cause we were right next to a children's area. And the other thought was, I don't want to have to have one of the people who already hate us in the hospital, uh, you know, like the cleaning people to have to come clean this mess up. So, um, I was like, nah, I'll do it later. And, uh, I kind of forgot about it and then walked away. Um, I didn't say, no, I'm not going to do it. I said, I'll do it later. So that's, you know, that, you know, that makes you think, right? Uh, so a couple weeks after that, um, I, again, I was, I was down and I was in, uh, my bathroom and I just decided to sit down in the shower and, um, again, had the knife and I was like, yeah, I think now's a good time. And when I was about to do it, 
for some reason, a weird thought in my head popped in. It was like, uh, I guess you could call it like the, the, you know, the last saving grace of the one rational part of you coming in and saying, Hey, you know, if you, if you really want to do this, like I'll go with you and do it, but just give it 24 hours. If you still feel this passionate about it, 24 hours from now, I'm not going to stop you. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a fair deal. You know, who knows? Maybe I'm just being sad or whatever. And uh, 24 hours later, I, uh, I, you know, I woke up and I was like, damn, I can't believe I did that. It's it's weird when it happens like that because you go into a fog, and uh, you don't quite remember. Uh, you know, like I like I, I remembered bits and pieces of what I was thinking. You know, the, like the next day after it ha- after that you know, kind of a event. But I don't, I don't remember like why I was thinking it or, you know, I just, it was, it's so weird how like in that haze, you don't believe in anything and you just, um, you know, want to, uh, you know, you, you just go with your natural impulse and the, and, and whatever force is taking over you at the time. So that happened. And then the, that Monday I told that to my therapist, luckily I was going to my therapist that time because I was seeing her about once a week. And uh, I see it once every two weeks now. Uh, it, it, you know, it's a good thing. I don't know if I need it very much anymore because I'm very stable now. But it's always good to have a sounding board. And there are sometimes some things that I need to talk about. You know, like, I, you know, my dog died recently or we had to put him down. And I was okay. You know, I, I was all right. You know, I was sad, but I wasn't depressed. And I, I think I owe, I owe that a lot to the healing of my head and, and all the people that helped support me with that. So thanks to everybody with that. Um, but anyway, so, uh, I, I was, I went back to that, uh, I went to my doctor and she was like, we need to get you into a hospital. So, uh, they called around and there were no beds and rooms open for that. You know, they called a bunch of different hospitals. And, uh, so we figured out that like, kind of like a house arrest and everyday therapy was going to have to work and I'd have to see my doctor to put me on a new med and whatnot. And, uh, so that's kind of what happened. It's weird, you know, having everybody just kind of, you know, focus on you that closely. And I'm not kind of that type of guy where I like to be, uh, you know, bugged so much, or at least I wasn't. And, uh, so it was, it was a weird week. I was off. I had to take off of work and I had to explain to my boss that it was a, you know, this was a serious situation. And, um, he understood to a point he's kind of old school in that, you know, you just kind of shake it off and don't worry about it. Uh, you know, Hey, you know, if it's not like a physical injury, come to work, that sort of deal. Um, but I, I really couldn't work, especially when I thought about it, you know, you know with my rational mind, I was like, Hey, I almost killed, I, 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 was considering killing myself in the freaking bathroom here. So, you know, suicide is a hard thing to do. And the, and the people that actually do it, they truly feel that's it. Either that or they psych themselves up so much that they, I go, temp, you know, they probably go temporarily insane and just go and, you know, do it. So that's, that's a harsh thing. Anyway, uh, so the house arrest happened and we got, and I, they put me back on the prestique and I started getting the, uh, the headaches again cause the prestique was working. And what we found out was I need to do, um, uh, two 25 milligrams a day rather than the whole 50 milligram in one shot. So I do it one in the morning, one in the evening, and that's worked out for years so far. I mean, it's helped me, uh, you know, get my head right. And, uh, so the whole rest of that year, probably, you know, uh, all the way up until March of, uh, last year. So June, two, 2017, all the way to March, 2018, I just kind of let myself go. Uh, I had ballooned all the way up to, uh, I mean, I, I, my heaviest, you know, when I was with you guys, I was like 370. I ballooned all the way up to 430. I mean, crossing that 400 mark was, it should have been an eye opener, but it really wasn't. I just was like, ah, whatever. And just can't continue to eat and eat and eat and, you know, fill that, uh, void of, you know, you know, try to fill that void with food. And it really, when you try to fill that with empty calories, it didn't quite work. And, um, man, it was bad. It was, it was bad. So 2018 came around 
I was still stuck in a rut. I didn't like where I was, but I was, you know, content and I was still like depressed, but the prestique was holding, holding everything, holding all the crappy, really bad stuff back. So I wanted to, uh, I, I just kept saying, you know, I want to kill myself, but other, you know, like other people won't let me the, you know, you know, like the medicine won't let me. And, uh, it was just, you know, more of just trying to find a way out of the situation I was in. And instead of, you know, just an easy way out. And, um, well, I, it, that didn't work for me. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I, I think it's time to put in some hard work. And for some reason, when I went to the doctor, I, I had a couple of doctor's appointments in March that day. It was March 16th, I think it was, or 14th. I can't remember. It was a couple of days after. Yeah, so it was uh, March 16th. It was my um, the couple of days after my grand my grandfather's you know like death anniversary. If that's a thing, death anniversary. I don't know. And um, I just decided. You know, after I go, like after I went to this doctor, it was my uh, my neurological doctor, because um, I have this thing called uh, intracranial hypertension, which puts pressure on my uh, my optic nerves. My the front of my brain is swelling, um, and weight, like letting yourself go, does that. You know, uh, it's called papillary edema. It's no good. Some of you might know about it. Some of you know, or you might know people with it causes migraines and stuff like that. I was lucky I found mine early because of the line of work that I'm in. I was able to take an image of my eye when I was having a headache, just a small headache, because I just was curious. And uh, sure enough, it showed swelling, and then I had to go in for a spinal tap, and then I had to do all this other stuff. It was just crazy. Been on, I went on this medication for uh, that just was ugh, terrible. Um, I'm off it now, which is great, uh, because you like when you actually lose weight, it takes stress apparently off of it and you're you know it, it you know the swelling went down so yes this is one of the few times that was that when a doctor said hey you need to lose weight or else you're gonna die um, I actually listened and was like oh okay it's actually working so yeah losing weight does help you know I'm not trying to fat shame anybody you know if you're happy and healthy then you be happy and healthy you do you babe but for me it was bad I got it was it was in a bad way so um, yeah, so that happened, and uh, I had to go see her, and again, it was getting worse. Uh, you know, it had gotten better, and then it was, you know, it was getting worse again, and it was the worst it had ever been. And then I went to my other doctor, and he was like, "You got to do something. What can we do to help you?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just, I don't know." And on the way home, um, I decided to stop in this gym. I had been a part of a gym, but I had never gone to it. It was a brand new gym right by my house. There was no reason I should not have gone to this gym. It was, you know, right there. And, um, so I, uh, I went to the gym and I said, Nick, just stand there, go into the gym, physically stand there, maybe go on a treadmill for five minutes and then leave. You know, just, just five minutes. You can do five minutes, but at least you're there. So I did. I felt pretty proud of myself. So, you know, as terrible as it is, but I felt proud of myself and I, I still am proud of myself because I took that first step. And on the way out, I just, I had to share that with other people. So the people that were working in the, um, you know, like in the front desk, I just had to tell them, hey, I did this, whatever. And I, what I didn't know was that my soon to be, you know, good friend and now personal trainer, um, you know, Nate, he's, you know, yeah, I know I have a brother, Nate, but this is, you know, you know my trainer's name is Nate, which is hilarious. Um, I, I, I had to tell him, I was like, Hey, uh, I just, I just want to let you know, this was a big deal for me. I just needed to share it with somebody. I kind of got embarrassed after saying that. And so then I kind of rushed out and I, as I was walking to my car, Nate ran after me and said, dude, I just want to let you know, that's awesome. I'm proud of you. You did a great job. He didn't give me his card. He didn't give me the whole spiel of, Hey, I want to train you. He said, he just wanted to, you know, he just wanted to let me know he was proud of me. And that was awesome. It's what I needed. And, uh, so the next day I went back and then I started going, not every day, but every other day, you know, maybe, you know, every, every other, other day, you know, depending on how I was feeling. And then eventually I got into my head. I was like, you know what, if you're going to do this, you need a trainer. 
because I needed support. I, I did I, at that time I couldn't do it by myself, and um, and he helped me, and he still does help me to this day. I'm still with him uh, until I can't afford him anymore. Uh, but it's it's money well spent. It's money worth it. Uh, then I, you know, as, as soon as I did that a week later, I called my, you know, you know, my doctor and said, get me into the bariatric uh, program. I just need to get this done because I know I don't have any control over food. It's, it's, a, I, I have a food addiction. It's my, that is my addiction. I don't drink, I don't smoke or anything or do other drugs. I, I do have a, mar a medical marijuana card. I do do that now, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And, uh, you know, so anyway, I just needed to, you know, get that done. Um, oh yeah, that was another thing. At the end of 2017, my good friend Bob got married and I was his best man. And just looking at the pictures and just how big I was and, you know, just like, good Lord, you know, I'm so embarrassed. Sorry, Bob. You know, I just, I was so embarrassed, you know, you know, just to be, you know, to, to, you know, I don't want to say ruin it, but just to look like that, I did, I, you know, the pictures could have done, you know, been better, but you know what I mean? It's, you know, I, if I had done my part and actually, you know, lost some weight, I could have made those pictures look a little bit better. But again, I'm, you know, that's, it's bad to think like that because you're putting stuff that isn't on you on you and it, it is whatever. But anyway, um, so I decided to do that and then we started the program. I started going to all the meetings cause I needed to go to like six months. Every month was a meeting and you had to lose a certain amount of weight before you have the surgery and uh and all that and um uh so you know it just was it was a whole big deal and uh i followed through with it so january 8th of this year i had the surgery i mean it, i couldn't believe it i i mean there was a small portion of me that would uh, that still said don't do it you're not worth it don't do it but i did it and I feel great. It's so far it's been the, you know, I mean, it's only been a couple weeks, but it's, I've been dropping pounds. I went from 430 down to about 495 before I had to do the two week pre-op diet. Then from 495, I went down to, or I, I, I'm sorry, 430 down to 395. And then I started the pre-op diet, which is two weeks of pretty much just, you know, no fat, no whatever. And then, uh, the pre-op diet, 395 down to 379, and then now 379, I'm down to about 352. Um, uh, that's just a couple weeks after the surgery, and you lose about five to 15 pounds a, a, month, a week with this surgery until your body just says, you know, whatever. And I haven't been able to go work out, you know, in a month either. So once I start working out, the weight will fall off even more. I go back to work in about 10 days, so uh, I'm really excited about that, uh, just to see my friends again. And also, I got my head straight, I finally got my body straight, because going to Disney this past year, and I, I went in November of 2018, I mean, my knees and feet were hurting, it was just bad. You know, it's it's not good to walk that much, and you know, and I don't want to be one of those people that have to use a, uh, um, you know, like a scooter. Not that it's bad. If you need it, use it. You know, I, I don't hold it hold it against anybody else. But for me personally, I didn't want to be a 32 year old, you know, having to do that. Uh, like I didn't, ha I, I haven't needed a uh, a knee replacement or, a, or 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 anything like that yet. If you have that stuff and you have a, a you know. A sure, you know, for sure disability. And it's just my own laziness that would cause me to have to need that. I didn't like that. You know, obviously other people have, have, have medical problems that need it and totally, you know, use them. But if my own sheer laziness causes me to be fat, which has caused me to need to use the little scooter thing, I just didn't want to do that. I just, I, I, you know, it was again, further motivation for me to, um, to, uh, you know, to try to better myself. And, uh, yeah, so it was good. Uh, you know, I, I had the surgery, everything went well. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, there was pain right after the surgery, but you know, even the doctor said you, you, you did, you, you did or, and are doing better than most. Um, just be, I don't know why I got lucky. You know, uh, it, it, if I got lucky with anything, I'm glad it was this. So, um, yeah, so basically that's where I've been and that's what I've been doing. It's been, it's been a rough couple years and uh, honestly do it trying to fake being happy every week 
would have just driven me crazy and it was driving me crazy and uh, it's not you know good so if again with you know if, if anybody has any mental problems or you think you do know somebody that does get them help or go get help trust me it's not the end of the world I promise you it is not the end of the world and it can get better because it I mean if you if if, if you're willing to actually try yes you can do it try to surround yourself with positivity a good positive role models uh it's 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 very you know important and uh you know I'm I'm not even going to you know say okay in Me- in Maryland medical marijuana is good uh or it has been good for me uh, I tried it once again when I didn't have my card when uh, my uh friend was you know getting married I just was like you know what just try it and it wasn't at all like I expected I thought you know I'd be tripping oh whatever oh whatever no I just got really relaxed I was I was anxious and nervous throughout the whole day once I did that I just I was able to have a good time I didn't get messed up as any as other people you know said I you know I just got relaxed and I see now the benefits of it and uh, that's why I got the medical marijuana card I don't use it every day I'm not one of those guys that you know gets high every week or whatever like that I in fact you know because of the surgery I really can't do it but there were you know there were some days or some times when it was you know it was you know it's been rough for me and I and I would use it and uh, even the CBD oil that's uh, not marijuana you don't get high but it does help it helps me I use that in a pinch uh, you know, like uh, when I was down in Disney World, I started getting uh, I started getting anxious, and um, I had my CBD oil with me, and because um, it's not illegal, you can get it on Amazon. Um, and uh, I, I had my CBD oil with me, and it it just helps. It takes the edge off, and uh, that's exactly what I needed just to get me through. Because it was a kind of a rough uh, trip sometimes at at some points of it. Um, so again, I'm not. I know I'm not advocating for young children to go out and start smoking weed, but if you're a responsible adult that, you know, is having problems that may be an avenue you, you want to look down and talk about with your doctor if they support that. If they don't and they and your doctor that you trust thinks it's, uh, you know, wrong for you, then don't do it. But if your doctor, like my doctor, uh, he supports it and he monitors it and stuff like that and he helps me and it, and it, and it, and it does help me, so... I know it sounds like, oh, he's a weed head or whatever, but I'm not. I don't believe me. I don't smoke as much as uh, a lot of other people do. Um, you know, the first little bit that I bought, you know, and, and ground up and everything, I still have. So, you know, it doesn't, um, you know, I, I'm not there every week. You know what I mean? So, excuse me, with this surgery, I have to constantly be drinking water because my stomach is a lot smaller. I got the gastric sleeve, it's pretty cool. If you have any other questions about that, I might do a video just on, my, just on that experience. But I just wanted to give you guys an overview of where I've been and what I've been doing and why I've been away and why I needed time off and what my mental state is. And uh, you know, I, 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 I might make some more videos like, you know, doing random stuff, you know, whether it be the video games or just going around, piling around. Just if I have a, an opinion on something, I might, man, you know, excuse me, make a video. Uh, and I, I also have a, you know, a Disney video coming, so it's not as good as the other ones, trust me, but because it was getting harder as the week, as those 10 days wore on, because I was down there for 10 days at the Polynesian, it should have been good, right? It was at times, but there were some things that, you know, just made it a kind of a tough trip. Um, and uh, so as the days went on, I just decided not to shoot video. It just became too unbearable. Plus, it was really hot down there that, that week. Oh, my God. It was November, and it was 90 degrees. What is happening? Whatever. So, yes, the next time I go to Disney World, it's going to be in February. It better not be, you know, hot down there in February. Good Lord. That would bug the hell out of me. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of where I've been. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns or whatever, you can uh, just let me know. Uh, you know, in the comments, I'm open to answering questions. Uh, you know, I could, you know, I have a lot of extra time for the next ten days, so I just uh, want to, um, you know, you know, talk to you guys and see where you guys have been. Again, I know I lost a lot of subscribers, and if nobody wants to talk to me because I did kind of just stop, I understand. No hard feelings, trust me. 
Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, and I I I did mention um my dog Buddy. I did have a dog for the uh, for three uh, years. Uh, he passed away. We had to put him down because he was having some really bad medical problems. He, you know, like even when he came to us, he had some medical problems. But we tried to give him the best life he could for the net for the last three years of his life, and uh, I think we did. And he was my buddy. I love him. Uh, you're seeing some pictures there. And um, so we're actually going to see another dog tomorrow. Her name is Tess. She's a little white thing, and she looks really kind of fun. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting her and hopefully maybe bringing her to her forever home. I wasn't a dog person and now I am. So, uh, you know, it's it's cool that way. Buddy, honestly, if it wasn't for that little dog, that little black dog, shaggy, weird looking dog, um, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be here because he just being there helped me get through a lot of bad times and uh so i miss my, my you know my little buddy his name was buddy so i miss my little buddy and um you know i hope he wherever he is in doggy heaven he's out you know sore on the cosmos and smelling all the dog's butts that are up there too so yeah i love you buddy but yeah, that's what's been going on with me, and uh, I will uh, see you guys in another video some other time. I hope, I think that's pretty much kind of, that's all the bullet points that would have been going on with me in the last couple of uh, years. And again, if you have any comments or questions, just post them in the comments section below, and I will see you again after a while.